What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malt Activist, and welcome to another episode of where I lay down the knowledge and help you save some money. That's right, this video is titled, My Top 5 Smooth Whiskies for Under $100. Now before I begin this video and tell you which are my top five smooth uh, whiskies, let me tell you something, I have to go into a bit of a justification here uh, because there's a lot of seasoned whiskey drinkers, including myself, that don't like the word smooth. Okay, so for those of you who are just interested in knowing about which whiskies I recommend, I've timestamped them in the comment section. So just feel free to skip ahead to those sections and uh, get your fix. Good. And so if you're still here, that means you want to hear my justification. Now, I get a lot of comments and DMs from a lot of people who want to know, hey, what's a good entry-level whiskey that is smooth that I can drink. And personally, I don't like the use of the word smooth to describe a whiskey because in my head, it means that it's uncomplicated. However, I did a bit of soul searching and, and a bit of reflection. And I'm like, okay, what does the word smooth is the opposite of off? It's not complex because the opposite of complex is simple. The opposite of smooth is rough. And I can understand where new whiskey drinkers might think a certain drink or whiskey is rough. And by that, I mean very high strength or extremely overpowering uh, flavor profile, maybe too oaky, maybe too spicy, you know? and. Uh, a, a new whiskey drinker will club those flavors and th say, ooh, this whiskey is a bit rough, you know? And which we might consider complex because we're used to the flavor profiles. I love high strike whiskeys. I love spice in my whiskeys. Uh, you know, if it's not bursting with flavors and, and it doesn't overpower my senses, then I don't think it's complex enough. However, there's a world and a much larger world than ours where a smooth whiskey is considered good whiskey. And I don't see that necessarily as a bad thing because I remember my first time uh, quaffing like an entire bottle of VAT 69, to be very honest with you, and drinking it and thinking, oh my God, this is the worst tasting liquid I've ever had in my life. I wish someone at that point had introduced me to a smooth whiskey and a smooth drinking experience and I might have caught on the whiskey uh, whiskey craze much, much sooner than I actually did. So this video is going out to those people who are, let's say, uh, maybe starting out and exploring the world of whiskeys and hence uh, it makes sense for me to recommend whiskeys that are easy to drink that you can easily call what I like to say breakfast drams, right? Uh, they're, they're uncomplicated, they're very easy to drink, they're on the, on the more palatable side in terms of, its, uh, of their flavors and therefore by no means am I saying that smooth is, is a right way or a wrong way to describe a whiskey. I'm just saying there's a particular segment of people out there who are looking for an easy drinking, palatable experience as they get into the world of whiskeys. And that's who this video is for. I hope I've made myself abundantly clear because uh, I might get a lot of hate. I put out a little poll asking for people's uh, smooth drink, whiskey drinking experience. And some of them said, mm, that's a very controversial term. Are you sure you want to do that? And yes, I am sure because and now that I've sort of, you know, uh, justified myself, I think it's okay to just help share what I think are my top five smooth whiskeys. My first whiskey on this list is the Jameson, the Irish blended whiskey, triple distilled and available for a very, very pocket friendly $30 or roughly 22 pounds and uh, with clocking in with an ABV of 40%. This whiskey is 
probably one of my go-to whiskies. Uh, like I said, in the evening time, before I actually start drinking, drinking, uh, I will have uh, maybe a dram or two of the Jameson just to coat my palate, just to get my taste buds ready for what is about to come. And uh, I have to say, it's, it is a smooth drinking experience because it lacks the roughness or the edginess uh, of spice and overly oaked whiskies. In terms of the tasting notes, we have orchard fruits, we have pears, we have ripe apple, we have citrus, milk chocolate, butterscotch, vanilla, honey, and overall, it's quite a floral whiskey as well. As you can tell by those tasting notes, this would be a very pleasant drinking experience. Yes, it's uncomplicated. Uh, yes, it's not uh, you know overpowering with flavors, but it has some gentle aromas, gentle, uh, flavors on the palate that allows you to drink this quite easily without without gagging, without making a face. Uh, and I highly recommend this if you're uh, new uh, into the world of whiskey and you're looking at something that's easily palatable for you to drink, then the Jameson definitely is the one for you. My next whiskey on the list is probably one of my favorite whiskeys as well. It's the Balvini Double Wood. Now, this one from the Balvini Distillery is bottled at roughly 40%. Why do I say roughly? It is bottled at 40% and is available for a nice sum of $52 on average or 38 pounds. So again, quite pocket friendly in my opinion, but really at the end of the day, it's the juice that counts. In terms of flavor profiles, it's quite sweet. Lots of honey, sultanas, vanilla, dried fruits, nutmeg, cinnamon with a touch of oak. Now, for those of you who haven't uh, experienced the wonders of Balvini, let me tell you something, that there is uh, no other distillery quite like Balvini when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, manufacturing a nose. By and large, the whiskey is exquisite. And this Balvini 12 year old double wood is no exception. And when I say double wood, it means it's matured in bourbon and sherry casks uh, as well. Uh, again, makes for a lovely drinking experience, you know, bottled at 40%. Uh, it's uh, not that taxing on the palate. Uh, the flavors are on point. And again, if you're, if you're a new whiskey drinker, uh, then this is something that you will really, really be drawn to in terms of the drinking experience but even if you're not even if you're an experienced whiskey drinker this is still one of my go-to drams uh, if I'm not having the Jameson then I'm definitely having the Balvini 12 year old double wood to start off my morning <laughs> well I say morning uh, I mean drinking I mean drinking session it's not always in the morning please please drink responsibly that was just a Freudian slip no, but the Balvini 12 year old double wood is a stunning dram from a stunning distillery and uh, you know, very pocket friendly, very palatable. So if you don't have this on your shelf, I highly suggest you get one. Coming in all the way from Japan is the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve. Uh, again, you know, very decent dram available at a decent price of roughly 70, 72 dollars, which is 53 pounds and bottled at 43%. And again, the reason I've included this on the list is because it is still a good drinking experience if you're looking for smooth, if you're looking for an uncomplicated, uh, easy, easy drinking experience, then the Yamazaki Distillers Reserve is a good dram. In terms of the flavor profile, we're looking at strawberries, dried fruits, it's quite floral, with hints of coconut, vanilla, peach, and then a rounding off cinnamon. Uh, again, as you can see from that flavor profile, very, very accessible, very, very drinkable, and that's the reason it makes it on the list. Uh, do I consider it a, a simple whiskey? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, it's not very, very complex, but that's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for just a good drinking experience uh, of what I would like to say is a very, very decent whiskey. Staying within the land of the rising sun is the Hibiki Harmony. Now the Hibiki Harmony is a blended whiskey bottled at 40% and available for again, I think a fairly decent $79 or 58 pounds. Now the Hibiki Harmony is probably the answer to the Hibiki 12, which I believe has been discontinued and the 17, which I believe is hopefully coming back. 
but the Hibiki Harmony, obviously younger whiskeys in here uh, and, and uh, blend uh, overall. But again, it promises a smooth drinking experience and very, very palatable flavors. So what are we looking at? We're looking at melted butter, caramel, sweet dates, brown sugar, citrus, white grapes, oak with a touch of spice. And again, as you'll see the pattern, you'll see that I've chosen whiskeys that have, that are more on the sweeter side of the flavor profile, uh, not overly complex in terms of the flavors uh, and just, and bottled at low strengths in order to give you an easy drinking experience. And I keep using that word, you know, phrase easy drinking experience because I think that's what smooth actually really means. So if you're looking to put a Japanese bottle of whiskey on your shelf, then I think the Hibiki Harmony is probably a good one to start with. And finally, from the Isle of Oban, yes, you've guessed it, it is the Oban 14, available for roughly $82 or 59 pounds and bottled at 43%. Once again, I think fairly decent pricing for a great whiskey uh, at a low strength, which gives you, again, a good, good drinking experience. In terms of the flavor profile, we have tiniest hint of smoke with some marmalade, toffee apples, pears, it's a bit malty and rounded off with toasted oak and a hint of spices. This is probably the more most complex one on the list, uh, but not again overly complex. And I think this is a good sort of gateway into drinking more complex uh, single malt whiskeys as you move up in your whiskey experience. Uh, once again, you know, I've drunk a lot of the Oban 14. It's Again, one of my go-to drams, uh, something that I like to start the evening off with when I'm uh, sitting down to have a drinking session with my friends or a tasting session with my friends. This is normally a palate cleanser that's sort of handed out at the start because it's uncomplicated. I use uncomplicated in, in the nice way, not in a derogatory way. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's once again, it's an easy drinking experience. So I know I've said that a lot, but uh, the Oban 14 is probably one of the more accomplished whiskeys uh, on this list. So, you know, uh, if you don't get any one uh, of the previous four that I've mentioned, uh, but you get this one, I think you'll still be satisfied. So I know this is a bit of a controversial video for some of you, but I hope I've justified myself because, you know, honestly, I wish uh, I wish there was someone who had told me, hey, man, start off with these whiskeys. They're easy to drink. They're not they're, they're very palatable. They're not overly complex. And once you get the hang of it, move on to more complex, bigger and bolder flavors. And I think, you know, the same can be uh, said for cigars as well. For example, you know, you start off with sort of uh, light, light bodied cigars and ultimately moving on to more full bodied uh, spicy cigars, uh, which is, you know, essentially everyone's journey. And I don't think it's any different with the uh, whiskey either. So while I 100% do not, uh, do not approve of the word smooth to describe a whiskey, I know what people mean when they say smooth. And it means something that they can just drink without being overwhelmed by the whiskey, whether it's because of the high ABV or, or the spices or, uh, you know, or, or, or oakiness or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, they just want a whiskey that they can sort of drink and not be overwhelmed with. And hence, this list of five whiskeys should be able to satisfy that criteria. Without compromising my, without compromising my integrity, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, so if you want uh, an easy drinking experience or a breakfast dram, as I say, then pick any one of these five, uh, and I'm sure you'll be pretty pretty satisfied uh, with the results. So thank you, thank you, and I apologize in advance if I've offended anybody. That was not my intention, but you know what I mean. So thank you, thank you for joining me for this uh, for this video. I'm the Malta activist. Until next time, peace.